Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are on our 24th episode of our featured weekly build discussion series that walks us through one build a week from Thanksgiving 2019 to Thanksgiving 2020 and it has been an incredible journey so far. Today what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a pause on featuring builds and we're going to take a look into what sort of components are needed for a build guide to be helpful and useful for players to use as a reference in their journey of Path of Exile. So you could say we're getting a little abstract here where this week we're essentially talking about the build guide of making a build guide. If you enjoy the discussion today, then you can of course like, subscribe, and ding the bell to be notified about more discussions just like this one in the future. And of course, there are for your convenience place of my slightly balding forehead, some timestamps for you to jump forward or reference any of the discussion points that we've discussed today. So without any further ado, let's ask the question, what makes a good build guide? And then let's answer it and discuss it together. Our first example of what a good build guide needs is a good name. As you are putting together your build guide, this oftentimes will actually be the last thing that you might think of. Maybe it comes as a reference or a meme or a particular joke or simply a shorthand that's descriptive of the various gems and the various items that you are using. In this particular case and in this particular example that we're showing here right now, this was an April Fool's build that we featured originally on on April 1st of 2019, but then we did a one year anniversary update. Now the name of this build was the Chad Zerker 100% Hardcore Viable and 6 Trillion Uber Shaper DPS. Now, the reason why I chose to use those particular memes and those particular jokes in the title was to make it very, very clear in the title. As soon as you are scrolling through the forums or looking for a build or examining a build, the title is the very first thing that is going to bring a player to your build. Now, this obviously isn't true if you're just making a build to be showcased on YouTube or to be showcased on Twitch. This is talking about specifically writing forum guides. You'll want to think about your title because your title is going to be your very first impression for your reader. If your title has a big, big sales pitch or a big, big promise that it needs to deliver on, then you need to make sure that your build guide does that and does it quickly. Because this is a trolley joke build, I wanted it to communicate right from the very get-go that this was a trolley joke build. So by promising 6 trillion Uber Shaper DPS, most players are going to recognize first off that 6 trillion anything in Path of Exile is probably not something that is going to be deliverable except for maybe like a 6,000 trillion ping spike and that Uber Shaper is not even a monster in the game presently. So the goal was from the very, very get-go of the title of the build, players would know exactly what to expect once they clicked on the build guide. So that's what I did with my troll title of a build that was posted for April Fool's Day. But Ira38 shows us a great example of what to promise in your title to attract players onto your build guide and then what to actually point them towards. So his title for his build that we featured as our 11th featured build guide of this particular series was a COC Volatile Dead Assassin with 1 million per ball explosion damage and it's all content viable. As soon as you look at the title of this particular build, you already know what your main DPS source is, what ascendancy it is that you're going to be playing on, and whether or not it's designed to take on all content. This is a great example of a great title that will help communicate to players who are looking for a build. Maybe they're looking for an assassin style build. Maybe they're looking for a COC style build. Maybe they've never played Volatile Dead and want to experience exactly what that's all about. Regardless of whatever it is that draws the player in, your first impression is going to be your title. So make sure that your title is something that your build guide delivers on. Once a player has read your build title, they've seen it on the forums and they thought, yeah, sure, I'll click on that and see what it's all about. Now is the chance for you to begin delivering on the promise of the title of your build. This is where explaining either build concepts or overarching build mechanics, or even leading in with a pros and cons list, and oftentimes is an accepted feature early on in a build forum guide. The earlier you can communicate to other players who are checking out your build guide exactly what it is that it does and how it goes about accomplishing its goals, then your build has more chance to actually push players away who won't be interested in it. And it also allows players who are interested in it to figure out the mechanics and to start to layer and make decisions for themselves about how they're going to approach the build. 
Is this going to be a build that features mechanics that they've ever played before? Is this a build that maybe is going to be a new approach to something that they have revisited? Or maybe it's something that's a totally new approach to a mechanic that they've never messed around with. These are all aspects of your build that you'll want to highlight early on, either through a pros and cons list, a build concept list, or a mechanics list. In this particular featured build, this was from Unknowns. We featured this as our 16th episode in this particular series. Unknown does a great job of showing off the build concept, exactly what made him want to make his build and then displaying both pros and cons but more about pros and cons in just a moment focusing in on your build concept one thing that you don't want to do here is write an entire build guide in your build concept you want to keep this relatively short i've read hundreds of build guides over the last several months and one of the things that keeps some guides from being featured is that players can't keep a relatively short or condensed introduction to what the build actually does your build introduction is not a place for you to link every piece of gear it's not a place for you to show off your path of building it's not even a place for you to include your videos necessarily it is a place where you want to start delivering on the promise of your title whatever it is that first drew players in whether that's the ascendancy whether that's your damage whether it's the type of content that you're doing whether it's the memes or the jokes that were included in your title whatever it is that you started to promise to the player in your title is what you want to start to deliver on but that's just the start it's not the end of it so don't feel like you need to cram an entire build guide into your build introduction I mentioned a moment ago, speaking of pros and cons, Unknown does a great job here with his particular build guide, showing off pros and cons and exactly what it is that the build is going to want to watch out for, what it is that players should watch out for if they're not interested in the build, and what exactly is going to be attractive about this particular build for the players who are reading it and going to try it. As a general rule of presentation, don't show off more pros than cons or more cons than pros. Try to have things line up. So if you've got five different pros of your build, what are five different cons of it? Now at this point, this is not a hard and fast rule, right? This is simply helpful presentation. But if you're showing a build, for instance, that's got five pros and only one con, well, I might be thinking as a player, as I'm reading through your forum guide, you really haven't thought out what the cons are of your build, or you're holding something back and you're not telling me something about your build. Conversely, if you've only got one pro and you've got a bunch of cons, why should I try out your build? It sounds like there's more drawbacks to your build than there are advantages to trying out your build. So you want your pros and cons list to be transparent, you want it to be honest, and you want it to be relatively even in its presentation of the number of pros and cons on both sides. Now, oftentimes players debate about where exactly to feature their videos. In this particular guide, Unknown has put them relatively close to the top. Some players will use the spoiler tag in their forum guide in order for you to actually bounce around and check out different subsections of a particular forum post. That's a great way to divide things up. But regardless of whether or not you're using subsections and headings and using an introduction or even a table of contents or not, putting your videos somewhere close to the top, either near your introduction or near your pros and cons list prior to where you get into the nitty gritties of the passive tree, of the ascendancy choices, and of the gear breakdowns, showing your videos early on, or at least putting a link, or at least showing in your table of contents relatively soon what the gameplay actually looks like, allows a lot of players to skip a whole bunch of stuff if they don't want to read, and they can simply go take a look. What does this build actually look like in action? The reason why I personally don't advise for players to put their videos at the very, very front of a particular build guide is because the reason why we're on the forums and why we're reading is because it's still primarily a forum. And so if we're just looking for links or if we're just looking for video redirects, oftentimes those build guides don't really pick up much steam. They don't generate a whole lot of player popularity. If it's just a link to a YouTube channel, more often than not, players are like, well, that person's just spamming their YouTube link. They're not actually wanting to teach me or show me or engage with me about how to interact with their build. So don't be too pushy with your videos. Include them, make them available, make them available towards the top, but don't make it so that way somebody approaches your build and thinks, oh, this is just somebody who's showing off a build video rather than a true build guide. Something that I can reference as a player as I try to emulate or replicate or even mess around with and play jazz with this particular concept of a build. A moment ago, I mentioned having a table of contents. This is something that can be very, very helpful if your build guide is going to be extended and in any way lengthy. 
Using the spoiler tag is very, very helpful if you've got a lot of information, but you want to make it so that way it loads in quickly, whether or not a player is using, let's say, a mobile device in order to access the build guide. I know oftentimes I'm reading build guides on my phone while I'm away from my desk or away from my computer, but it simply makes it handy to know exactly how much information is going to be presented in this particular build guide. Is there going to be information about a path of building, about a passive tree online? Is there going to be an FAQ section? Are there videos of gameplay? Exactly what gem setups are available for a build? This and more questions can be answered when your player clicks on your forum guide to take a look. They're interested in your forum guide, but they're not sure exactly how much time they've got to commit. And so giving them a table of contents allows the player to quickly assess, is this a guide that's in-depth enough for my tastes? Or maybe it's too in-depth for my taste. You can let players know right away or relatively soon exactly where to find pieces of information that are relevant for them or simply move on and find another build. Now exactly how fancy you wanna get with your table of contents or exactly how fancy you wanna get with your layout, there are a ton of different options that you can use on the forum and on the guide editor. This is a guide from Danka, which of course we featured in our 20th episode this particular series. And aesthetically, it's simply one of the most beautifully presented build guides that's out there in Path of Exile on the forums. Not only does Danka give us headings and use spoilers so that way all the information is relatively compact, he also uses visuals in order to communicate to the player exactly where they can look for information about the passive tree, the pantheon, gem setups, equipment, and more. This is where you can feel free to express yourself, feel free to get creative. If you want to make a massive forum post that's got lots and lots of details and lots and lots of flair, you can do that. If you want to make something that's relatively trimmed down, straightforward, and simply gives information in bite-sized packages, that's also an option. One very, very helpful feature that you should consider including in your build guide is of course a path of building link. Now this is an old path of building link to a build that I put together and to a forum guide that I put together originally for 3.8 Hardcore Blight League. And one of the most helpful features about path of building, especially for new players, is being able to use path of building as a leveling companion as you're going from level one all the way to wherever your journey eventually will end throughout your play in Path of Exile. Clicking on this simple little drop down option that's right next to me, you can build out different trees for different levels. You can start with a tree right as early as level 20 and show players as you are progressing through act one, this is what your skill tree is going to want to look like. You can take a look at what your skill tree is going to look like as you continue to progress and do maybe some optional side quests. What your build is going to look like after you've ascended and after you've taken out a couple of act bosses. As you're continually getting more and more different passives available to you and more and more skills available to you, you can fill out and show off the different nodes that are appropriate and acceptable and needed for your build to tick at the various power checks and DPS and health checks that are going to be present throughout the 10 act story campaign. So using this manage your passive tree option is very, very helpful. You can simply go in, save a passive tree. Oftentimes, Fixing or detailing on a path of building is like the last thing that build guide creators will think of. Oftentimes they'll just think of writing their guide and presenting it on the forums. And that's very, very good. But if a player pulls up your path of building that you suggested for them to pull up and all it shows you is let's say a level 91 tree, a player might be asking, for instance, in this case, well, when I first start, do I want to make my way and come down to Soul of Steel right away? Is that what I should prioritize? Or do I need to make my way all the way up here to Death Attunement? Is that what I should be doing? Where exactly should I prioritize my points? I mean, there's 114 points on this passive tree and I'm level two. Where do I put my first two passive points? So you want to be able to make it so that way your build guide is as helpful as it can be to players who are approaching the game and hoping to utilize your build guide that you've put together to take them through their various experiences in Rayclast. The passive tree isn't the only spot that's got some helpful additional information in path of building. One thing that I like to do in my builds is I will go through and take whatever information I am going to write out or need to acquire for a build and I will put it in the notes tab. So you see at the very top of path of building there is a notes function that you can select and on here you can see I've got the gems that I'm going to need for this particular build. I'm going to need Ray Zombie because this was a Zombie Mancer. However, this was a Juggernaut Zombie Mancer, which unfortunately, Juggernaut doesn't have Ray Zombie available to them in Act 1. So if a player picks out a Marauder and starts going through Act 1 and progresses, they're waiting for that Ray Zombie to show up. 
They never find it. They come back to me, G3 Iron, and say, Iron, I thought you said this was a Ray Zombie build. I never even found one of those gems. Oh, I hate this guy, and I hate this build guide creator. You can avoid all of that frustration by simply telling players, hey, here's the mechanism and the means available to you to actually go about finding whether it's your gems, whether it's finding specific uniques and whether or not you can farm for them, whether that's an SSF or if they'll need to trade for them in a trade league and the approximate prices of those particular items based on the popularity of this particular build. All of those are helpful pieces of information to allow players to process and decide whether or not this is ultimately a build they're going to try out. I personally would rather spend 10 hours reading through different build guides and looking at different path of buildings and examining build guides and making decisions on them rather than playing one build for 10 hours and then deciding, oh, this isn't the build for me. Or even trying out 10 different builds with one hour increments and trying to figure out if they're right for me. Oftentimes we can communicate with each other through the tools that are available to us on the forums as well as through path of building to really let players know, is this going to be a great build for them? And should they be considered considering this, or should they keep looking for the next build? Some players, for instance, might not want to play a build like a Marauder Juggernaut that's going to be using gems like Ray Zombie that aren't available to them right away. So in that regard, we've tried to allow for a contingency plan. You can acquire Ray Zombie via playing a witch in order to go to enemy at the gate, complete that quest, and then pull that particular gem over to your Marauder. Or you can level up as a Marauder and wait until you get to Siosa in Act 3 to simply buy your Ray Zombie. Or you can even trade if that's your option for you and you're in a trade league. Lots of different options here for acquiring gems. Also, we wanted to have a breakdown of exactly where it is that players would get their passive points. So if a brand new player sat down and this was their first build guide that they ever saw, there would be a helpful walkthrough. Now, that's just what I have done for my personal build guide. It doesn't mean that everybody has to think of new players on day one of their Path of Exile experience with every single build that gets made. Again, that goes back to your particular title. Is your particular title something that's going to draw new players in? Because if it does draw new players in, you need to be aware of that. You're going to get more questions asking you from a new player perspective. Hey, where do I go and find that gem? Or hey, when do I get that next passive point? Or hey, what quests are actually mandatory for this particular build? Or the classic troll, which is the troll of all trolls. Hey, which bandit quests do I do? All of those are questions that are appropriate coming from new or even newer players to your build. Oftentimes, even as veteran players, maybe a player simply hasn't played with that particular type of gem, with that particular type of character, or with that particular focused ascendancy. There's lots of questions that players will bring to your build, and Path of Building with the Notes section is a wonderful place to grab a whole bunch of additional information that might overwhelm players on your forum guide, but here it's helpful and welcomed. I'm gonna refer back to my troll Chad Zerker build guide here, the April Fool's Guide, for just a second. One of the reasons why I chose to include keystones in this particular build was simply because I thought it would be funny, right? It would be really, really funny to talk about going CI and how that's going to be really, really great and awesome when we're not scaling any kind of energy shield. That's the joke of it. But the helpful lesson for us here is as you're breaking down mechanics in your build guide, you'll want to A, include some images, especially as we're talking about adding new cluster jewels. And if cluster jewels go core, then adding in their images are quite helpful for players to actually know exactly what it is that they're looking for. So any kind of image that you can reference off of the wiki and then pull for your form guide is very, very helpful for new players to familiarize themselves with. But on top of that, not every player knows how every keynote works. I've got over 5,000 hours on my Steam account alone in Path of Exile, and there are still some aspects of the game where I'll look at a notable, or I'll look at a keystone, or I'll look at an ascendancy, and I'll wonder, huh, I wonder how that interacts with this other keystone or notable. So explaining exactly what keystones or notables are important on your build is very, very helpful, especially in directing players to making decisions as they're leveling. Are they going to go grab an offensive oriented spackle of the tree or are they going to look for defenses first? Letting players know what are the key aspects of the build or the key notables in the build inside your forum guide is going to be very very helpful. As we talk about showing gear inside your build guide it's very very important that you reference exactly what the thought process was for the particular piece of gear that you chose for your particular build guide. 
For every single piece of gear that you choose to include in your particular build, whether or not it's a direct link to a particular item, as is the case here with this particular Star Forge or this particular helmet, regardless of whether or not there's a particular item that you are showing, or if it's a generalized item. So for instance, saying in your ring slots or in your amulet or for boots, regardless of whether or not it's a particular item or a generalized item, give players some idea of what thoughts were going through your particular mind as you were assembling the build and why is it that that particular item slot has those particular item requirements. So for instance, here Blocker2 says, basically Starforge, any axe or sword would do, but I like Starforge since it has AoE and life on it. That tells us right away as a player, you can use Starforge, but if you don't have Starforge, you can still play this build. Conversely, a build, if it says you must have Starforge because we're relying on Starforge as our dependent unique for all of our damage source, and it won't work with the tree and any other item configuration, that's very important information to know. Blocker2 has done a great job of letting players know you can use Starforge or you cannot. It's up to you. But if you want to use AoE in life, that's the reason why you go Starforge. So regardless of whether or not you want to go with a general specified one sentence summary of why it is that you chose your particular items, like what Blocker2 did, or if you want to go like what Tomahawk has got here presented in this particular build guide, his Queenliness Wander, which we featured in our 13th episode of our build guide series, he's giving us a couple of options here in our shield slot. We're looking for high life, resists, and then high evasion. You can go Elder and Hunter influenced items in order to get percent increased maximum life. Or you can choose to go Crusader influenced items to get minimum power charges. Also, other considerations to take into account are that accuracy rating and attack speed on your shields are nice because it means that there's a little bit less pressure for you to find those stats on other pieces of gear. So detailing a bit, not only the relationship of this individual piece of gear with the totality of your build, but also talking about its relationship to how it functions with other pieces of gear are very, very helpful. For instance, build guide creators will oftentimes reference boots as a generic move speed and resistance slot. Rings and amulets oftentimes as life, energy shield, or resistances. Conversely, if there's required in slot uniques in those particular positions, that means that you as a player are going to have to be looking elsewhere for those needed stats. As a build guide writer, think about as a player coming to your build guide is asking questions. Where am I getting my defenses from? Why is it that you chose this particular item, unique or rare, for this particular slot? Is there an upgrade in this particular slot? You as a build guide creator have probably already done a lot of that thinking. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to have every perfect answer for every perfect gear slot. In fact, oftentimes players will have comments for you as a player that will help contribute and you'll actually add those into your build guide because by putting out a build guide, other players can contribute and help reinforce and strengthen what you have started. In this way, we actually see build guides functioning oftentimes at their highest capacity, both as a template for other players to build off of, but then also as a gathering place for players to help one another and to grow their characters and to exchange ideas. A wonderful example of community contribution back into a wonderfully well-written build guide is with Skyscan's Arakali's Fang Witch, which we featured most recently in the previous episode of this particular series. Skyscan gives credit to PoE user Kian, who came up with a way to redo the entirety of the tree and bolster the defenses and offenses of the build through a new approach thanks to Cluster Jewels. One of the biggest compliments you can get as a build guide creator is having someone like Kian give this detailed level of a response and of a suggestion for your particular build. Kian walks through the build, says exactly how it is that he's adjusted the build in order to make it so that way there are more options based on the new content that's coming out. You'll want to include these sorts of tips and feedback and frequently asked questions in a section, whether that's at the towards the end or towards the middle of your particular build guide as is appropriate. If you get somebody dropping you a comment like this about your build guide, it's telling you, hey, your build guide is so amazing. You've inspired me to go out, create something, and now I'm sharing it back with you. It's an amazing, amazing exchange of information and thoughts between two different PoE players who are simply in sync and moving along together towards a common goal improving their characters. All of that is there because you started with a build guide and another user has been inspired by your build guide. 
So make sure you include a reference to their particular post or their particular suggestion, because it could be that that's actually going to be a new way for you to try out the build and enjoy it. It could also be that you won't necessarily enjoy that particular play style or that particular suggestion, but maybe other players would. So make sure that you include a frequently asked questions section or somewhere that you can give props and give a shorthand feature for other questions or other suggestions that have come up in your build guide that you've gotten from other players. The last thing that you'll want to include, but maybe it's one of the more important things just in terms of visualization and whether or not players will actually choose to play your build is a change log of some sort. You'll need to communicate to players, whether that's in your title, whether that's in your introduction, or if that's in your table of contents. Somewhere in your build, you must communicate whether or not your build is up to date for the current iteration and current league, current patch of Path of Exile. I myself know that there are still some players on standard who are using my build from 3.8 and they've actually come and sent me PMs and said, hey, Iron, what, what is it that we're going to do with stuff from 3.9 or stuff from 3.10? If you no longer plan on updating your particular build guide, simply go back in and say so. Hey, I'm no longer updating this. Please don't ask questions about it or reference other players' suggestions or questions throughout the build guide because I'm no longer responding to them. Conversely, if you are keeping it updated, make sure you let players know that. You can let them know this is how the newest patch notes are going to be affecting this build. Oftentimes, those first couple of days in between a new development manifesto, patch notes being released, and then league launch, that's some of the busiest times for build guide creators because they're trying to digest all of the new information and then trying to predict exactly how it's going to impact their particular build guide. So as you are writing your particular build guide, that is something to keep in mind. That's something of a regular schedule that you should be aware of exactly when is going to be a new league launch and when patch notes are coming out. And then of course, you're more than welcome to join us or join any other community member, of course, that likes to read patch notes together because that's going to be massive for you moving forward and for your build guide, exactly how the new patch is going to nerf, buff, change, or do nothing whatsoever, keeping your build in the same spot. That's massive and it's massive for you to communicate to players exactly what the changes are that are coming and how they're going to impact your build. Well, thanks so much for joining us today on our 24th episode of Featured Build of the Week. I am so thankful for everybody who has contributed and for, of course, all of the different build guide authors who have contributed to my knowledge in Path of Exile. I have thoroughly enjoyed this first half of the year, as it were, in terms of build guides and learning from all of you. And I look forward to the second half as we count down the weeks and the days until this particular one-year commitment to weekly build guides is wrapped up. If you've got suggestions or feedback or ideas on how to improve or how to add components to a particular build guide, feel free to drop us a comment down below. Of course, I'm sure I've made mistakes in this particular discussion, so also feel free to point out every single screw up that I've ever made and every moment where my voice went slightly awkward or off pitch. Thanks once again so much for watching, and I hope today is the day a Mirror of Calandra drops for you right after you post your forum guide. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.